Before I begin, I just want to introduce my good sister in the back. We're sitting there. If you don't know who she is, she's sitting in the corner, and you haven't really noticed her, but she's very important to our church. She's a choir conductor. Okay? Because I asked her, I requested and asked her that once in a while she could come to our service just to listen to all of us sing, especially the worship team, because we may need some assistance in our uh, vocalist, okay, not the instrumentalist, well, maybe that too, because as she leads the group in the front, it's a big group, and uh, she's very experienced in this area. So once in a while she's going to come here, so don't be, uh, don't be shy, sing if she comes next to you to listen to your voice, don't be shy, just sing, just sing, okay? She's not here to tell you you're bad or you're good or anything like that. She's here to help, she's here to help. So uh, I don't want you to be intimidated, especially the worship team, because as we sing, you know, it's that important to have good voices to sing to God. Well, it's not about the good voice, it's about Respecting is about bringing everybody to God's presence and so that we can come together and enjoy the beautiful presence of God. And so worship team is very important. And as you know, every time you sing, you want to give your best. I don't think when we go on your, your free time to go to karaoke, you will be screaming and singing terribly. People will be looking at you like, what are you doing with that microphone? <laughs> so, but that's all for fun. But when we come to God's house, as we come to worship Him, that's a little bit different. We want to bring our best. Now again, I'm not saying if you're not singing well, you cannot be in the worship team. You can't. But we're just here to help and to improve, to improve our, our voices so that we can sing good songs together. Okay? All right. So that's Elsie, our sister in that. Her name is Elsie. All right. So today, our topic is, I titled it as Living by Principle. Are you a person of principle? Now, why do we want to talk about this? In our society today, I'm not sure if you agree with me or not, we live on the basis of feelings, emotions. Predominantly, you are controlled by your feelings and by your emotions. You make decisions based on that, and not principle. Oh, I feel good today, so I'm going to do this today. You know what, I don't feel good, I don't feel like my girlfriend is not cute anymore, so I'm gonna switch and jump ship. Okay. You know, you know what? I know I cannot afford this, but I feel like buying this, I'm just gonna go buy it and worry about it later. You guys eventually give it all be in college and have a credit card. They're gonna send you these credit card applications one out and they're gonna say you approve the right. Because they want you to spend. And so you go buy it, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy this, and buy everything you want to buy because you do like buying it. And then you hold for the rest of your life. Or eventually when you get older, you say, oh, you know what? College is fun. Girls are beautiful. And where is your principal? Are you a speaker or not? Okay. Or are you going to be faithful? Emotions could take and get the best of you. In your life, is guided by your emotion and by what you feel is good at that moment in time. And that can be dangerous. Very dangerous. Even in church. Oh, I don't feel like certain. You don't feel like certain. You know, I don't feel like going to church. You really don't feel like going to church, but God says come to church. God says come, listen to his words, and live your life by daily prayer and devotion. Do you do that? Or does your emotion get the best of you? Now if you are governed by your, by your emotion, your life will be a mess. Because it's whatever feels good that day, that will determine how you can act. Same thing at home. How you feel with your parents at the moment in time determines what you say, things that come out of your mouth, the things that you do. The principles are all going to Things that you know is right and wrong matters not in the world because they are living by your emotions. So today we're going to look at the Bible character and he does not live by emotion. 
He does not let his actions be determined by how he feels. He goes by the principle that he received, that he studied, that he needed for a while. And who is that? Abraham. Some of us who listen to the Mandarin may know the verses already, but I'm looking at it from a different perspective here. Let's turn to Genesis 22. Okay. Let's turn to the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10. Only 1 through 10. Once again, our title is Living by Principle. But are you, God bless you, are you a person or principle? Are you a person or person principle? Remember, emotion changes. Principles do not. Emotion changes all the time. Every minute, maybe. Principle do, does not. Abraham, if you guys remember him, Father Abraham. That's me, son. What's that song? Maybe sons have Father Abraham. But before he had many sons, he had a difficult time with Sarah's wife. He conceived even having one child. Eventually, God gave given him a child at an old age of nine. His name is Isaac. So God gives him his most precious wish in life to have a child. Now he gets it. But the story has a big twist here. Now God gives him his only wish in life to have a child. Now God says something else. Now I want you to give it up. Now what kind of joke is that? You give me what I want. Now you want me to give it up? But how would Abraham react to that? How would you react to something like that? You have something you want something in your life so badly and now you got it. And God says, give it up. So three things I want to talk about today. The principle of trust, the principle of obedience, and the principle of faith. Three things that governs Abraham's life. And I want these three things to govern your life as well. So the first two verses we're going to read for this first part, the principle of trust. So verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2. We'll just start from the, from the front here. Uh, Megan, okay? And then we'll just jump to, uh, to Sydney. We'll just go this way. Okay? Verse, just verses 1 and 2 only. And we'll go on to the next one. 1 and 2. Let's follow along when somebody reads. Um, sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am. So I give you something, now I'll give it back. Basically, that's what's going on. Abraham prayed hard for his son. God said, give it back. The Bible said testing. Now, when I was reading this, again and again throughout my whole Christian life. Oftentimes I ask, why does God keep testing Abraham? Hasn't Abraham been tested enough? Haven't you been tested enough? But God says, no, I'm going to keep testing you until we get to heaven. So your whole life is going to be tested by God. And God has a reason God tests you. Sometimes we don't understand why God tests you. You think Abraham understand why God is testing him here? Definitely not. And that's how it is with our lives. Abraham, the father of faith, is tested here. Imagine God comes to you and asks you to give back the most precious thing you have. You don't have the answer, but just think about that. How are you going to feel? Whatever that is, I don't know what that is. For Abraham, is the son. Whatever you think is the most precious thing in your life now, God says, I'm taking it away from you. Give it back to you. 
are you going to be like a kid throwing the tantrums? You see that in kids, right? Many of us fall a lot like that. But there's no logical explanation. I'm not going to stand here and tell you there's a logical explanation for this. I wouldn't know. If I'm ever I might be perplexed, I'd be confused. But Abraham trusted. So the first principle is trust. Do you trust God? You say you believe in God. But do you trust God to the point that you have to give up something? Give us something that is so precious to you, even though God said, give it to me. No explanation. Are you able to do that? So whatever you want life, think about what you cannot give up to, to God for. I was asking you for that. Does God really want that? I don't think God would say anything to be honest with you. You know, people teach about tithing, right? Give money to church, right? You think God needs your money. God created money. God has all he needs. So does God need your stuff when God asks you to come? Does God? When God asks you to come and serve here in this fellowship, if you don't serve, do you think His plan will fail? Of course not. God asks something of you because He wants something in you to change. He wants something in you to improve. That's why God is asking for these things in you. Again, don't think you're giving so much up for God. You know, I hear so many people who witness Christians, we have to be careful when we are witnessing to people. Oh, I give up so much for God. Did you hear people say that? Oh, I used to be this, and they're so proud of what they do. Oh, but I give this up for God. That they're, that they're so magnificent. Be careful when you witness that way. You're not that good. We're not that magnificent. You're not that significant. You're good. God loves you. But it is not because you're so great that you give up something for God and now you're a Christian. God has given up his son's life for you. That is the witness. God has given up so much for you that whatever you have that you have to give up is minimal. It's minute. It means nothing. So don't think too much of yourself and be pompous, be arrogant, be so prideful. But instead, trust in the Lord. You know that God, our God gives you a lot of stuff. You're, you guys are blessed. You guys have so much for you going in your life. You're so smart in the things you do. You know, some are very athletic. Some are very, you guys are so good in uh, public uh, relationships. Right? Some of you are so good in, in, in your academics. And some of you are so good in your band. You know, I wish I could play an instrument, but I don't. But that's not what God gives me. So whatever God gives you, use it for Him. I'll take it away if you don't. Trust in the Lord. The principle of trust is important. If you live by your emotion, you would not have given up what God wants from you. If Abraham was living by emotion, he would be fighting God. He would be like, no way, Jose. No way. No way, God. No way, Yahweh. Right? Yahweh is God, right? No way, Yahweh, I'm giving anything back to you. You give it to me, it's mine now. It's like, oh, my God, give it to me. Why am I giving it back to you? <laughs> that would be our attitude, but that would be the wrong attitude. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs. 3, 5 says this, don't have to turn to it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding because it's failed. It will fail you. It's flawed, your own understanding. Psalm 34, verse 8 is, says this Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who trust in Him. You will trust in God. I hope you do. If not, your life will be miserable and you will be fighting God. Number two, verses three to six. Where are we at this? Okay, three, four, five, and six. Once we get to Audrey, we jump back to Timothy, okay? All right. Thursday. 
Number two, the principle of obedience. So now you trust in God. It doesn't stop there. Once you trust in God, where is your obedience? Does the Bible say Abraham hears God said, give me your son? And Abraham said, okay, I'll give it to you, but give me a month. So think about this. Does Abraham say that? No, okay, I'll give it to you, but you know what? Give me some time, let me go talk to my friends and see what they say. Let me go talk to my counselor and see what they say. No. You see what Abraham does? Right away. Are you obedient to God? You say, I, you trust God, I trust God, but are you obedient? Trust without obedience means nothing. It's just words. Are you obedient? Abraham, you see here, gets up, prepares the donkey, and then heads out to make that sacrifice. What about you? In your life, you say you trust God. In your life, you trust your parents. You trust, you have so many trusts in everybody, right? But what about your actions? You really, you know, what, what, what do they say? Do you practice what you preach? Or are you just speaking? you just normally just saying things, but you're not doing it. And if we're not doing it, then it means nothing. Let me give you an example. At age 35, God called me to go to Taiwan to do a mission trip. A simple two weeks mission trip at age 35. Emotionally, I was born and going. And then emotionally, I was not. Why was I not? Because my dad says, don't go. You have a medical practice. Why would you go? And then my friends would come to me, you're 35. What are you doing going on mission trips? Leave that to the younger people. Concentrate on your work. You're losing a lot of money for those two weeks that you're leaving. So the emotion that's in you battles your principle of God says that go and make the cycles of all nations. So I know the principle of going to be evangelism for it, but my emotion is holding me back because there's so many things that says don't go, don't go. So did I go? No, I did not go. I succumbed to my emotional calling. I stayed behind, and I did not go there. Why? Because my friends are away. What am I giving up two weeks of my money making practice? And then you give yourself all these excuses. Oh, my kids need me. Oh, my parents need me here. All these excuses in the world to not go on with what you promised God to do. If God calls you to do something, are you going to do it? So, yeah, 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 yeah. But when it comes down to doing it, well, I'm not sure. God says, be pure. God, I'm going to be pure. When it comes down to the temptation of Ireland, God said, be a good student. Be a good children. Be a good son and daughter. Yes, yes, but God, I promise I will be. Because the Bible teaches me, so I'm going to follow it. But when it comes down to doing it, are you doing it? Where is your obedience? You cannot escape God. God asks us to be obedient. And that's how our belief should be. So make sure God calls him again. Page 36. The same issue, same emotion though. Now you're one year into your work, you're even more established. God said, no, no, no. I want you to go. I want you to go to Taiwan and do that two weeks for me. Just two weeks for your life. You said you love me. So did I go this time? Yes. Yes, I did. What a crazy God I did. Because God changed me. And God helped me. Not that I give up my, my money. You know, that becomes not important. Again, 
not that I'm so good. It's not that, oh, I'm so smart now. I'm so wise that I can accept God's calling. It's always been there. The calling's always been there. I just need that extra motivation and strength from God to take it and do it and be obedient. And praise God indeed, because then God leads me to do the mission trip six years in a row. Well, I love it. I wish I could do it again. And I think God's calling me soon to do it again. At age 40 something, but you know what? Age matters not to be old. That's going to get it. That's our plan. And I want you to start praying about God's calling. If God calls you to evangelize, whether it be in your school, or just outside anywhere with your friends, even maybe even with your family, if your families are not yet, then do it. And if God calls you to go somewhere farther, maybe even Africa, I'm not going to go to Africa, but if God calls you to go to Africa, heed the calling. Obey God's calling and go. Because trust is the first step. Obedient is the second step. He can give you two verses. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Obedience is far better than sacrifice. Listening to him is much better than offering the fat of rams. Philippians 2 8 says this, and in human form he obediently humbled himself, that means Jesus, even further by dying and promotes criminal's death on the cross. Jesus is the best example of obedience. He is willing to obey and die on the cross. Our obedience Nothing compared to that. But God still asks us to obey. Obey, obey, obey. Don't let your emotion of this world, don't let your emotion of the changing culture affect your principle. Your principle that is set by this book must be followed. Principle do not change. Emotion changes. Your emotion change over time. Your parents, your friends, your brothers and sisters will be the first to tell you that. You change over time if you live by your emotion. Number three, what end? The principle of faith. Verses 7, 9, and 10. 7 of 8. I forgot 8. 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I'm going to skip the, uh, the, the bigger brothers and sisters in the back. Once we get to Johnny, we'll jump to Christopher, okay? When we jump to Christopher, okay, he says four verses here, I think, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? And then we'll jump to Christopher for the last verse. So, Nicholas, and then we'll go this way. Let's go along. Verses seven through ten. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham, why? Fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When I reached the place God had told him about a better group and altar better than arrange the woods on the if he found his son Isaac and prayed him on the altar and probably the Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Dun, dun, dun. Principle of faith, our last principle today. Trust Obedient, now faith. Faith, faith, faith. We talk about faith all the time, right? We're getting tired of talking about faith. Don't get tired. Faith is the foundation of your belief. Faith is the foundation of my life. Faith in who? Not in you. Not in myself. Faith in the God Almighty. Abraham does not know exactly God's plan. I do not know exactly God's plan. You may not know exactly what God's plan for you is. And sometimes things may not even look right, like in this situation, but God, you know, is telling Abraham, just do it. And Abraham says this, God will provide. You see how much faith that is? God will provide. He's not sure how. Even was about to really put that dagger into Isaac. God stopped. So God may test you to the point that you got to fully give yourself up to Him. And if you're not, you're not going to experience this. 
You want to experience God? Fully give yourself to Him. And your life will be different. Abraham really, really gave himself completely. He wasn't holding back. Oh, I know that. The Bible says so. That dagger is about to go. That dagger is about to go. Are you really, really, really to give up what you have? Are you really, really willing to give up the most precious thing you have? That's not an easy question to answer next. I mean, I mean, it's easy to say, yes, of course. But are you really, truthfully, willing to give up? Only by faith can you do it. Not by your strength. Not by your might. Only through faith in Christ can you do it. Just understand that. This is the thing again. You cannot do it. There's no way you can do it. No way. There's no way I can do anything in my life unless I place my trust, my obedience, and my faith in God Almighty. Because only He can put the strength in you. Not you. You cannot put it. You cannot go and get it from class, from course. You cannot get it just come here every day. You come here every day, you don't put your faith in God. You don't put that true faith, that complete faith in God that like Abraham does. You are not an experience. So God has a story for me. Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith. He is actually not the father of faith until he experiences this. Abraham experienced what God wanted him to be. And now he is titled the father of faith. We can be like Abraham. 2 Timothy verse 2, 11 to 13, verse says this. If we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure hardship, we will reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. God is faithful no matter what. And I am thankful for that because I am not. I am not faithful at all in my life. I stray away. Most of us does. I'm not the only one that we need to. So we're on the same boat. We're on the same train. I'm on the same man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. All you need to do is come back. He's going to wait for you. That's it. So whenever you face challenges in your life, or even if when you fall, when you fail, when you're not faithful, when you've done things that you may be embarrassed by, that is okay. Come back to God. And even in the future, when you do fail on the things you do, don't give up. Come back to God. Come back to God and everything will be okay because God's going to help you overcome these issues. Are you going to build your life on emotion? I'm coming back to this again. Are you going to build your life on emotion? And I want you to think about that question every moment of your life. In all your relationships, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends, eventually your spouse, or your girlfriend first, and your spouse, individually your kids too. Are you going to build your life on your emotions? Or are you going to build your life on the principle God gives you? The answer is very simple. But are you able to do it? Build on the principle of trust. Build on the principle of obedience. And build on the principle of faith. Use Jesus. Look at Jesus. Turn your eyes on the Jesus. He is the best example for your life. No one else. Just look for Jesus. I know it's hard because I don't know Jesus as you know from the Bible. That's faith, guys. Believe in Jesus. Do what Jesus tells you to do. Never compromise on your principles. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for 
who just come into our hearts and comfort us because many of us are facing life most of the challenges. Maybe you are taking away the things that's most precious to us. Not that you want us to suffer, but because you want us to grow and learn. You're molding us. You're perfecting us. So that one day, you can use our experience and help those who are in need and who will be also in our same shoes. Thank you so much for it. Help us to trust, to obey, and to keep our faith. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen